WGSNDB. Going Solo Network welcomes you to the Live Your Life Without Limits show. With your host, Ian White, Life Fulfillment Coach, who helps people get out of their own way so they can live the life they were meant to. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Live Your Life Without Limits show. I'm Ian White, your life fulfillment coach and the president of Coaching Deconstructed. And the topics that I want to talk about today to help you live the life that you truly want to live without limits is self-care, how important self-care is. I also have another practice that I want to share with you to help you keep you in the flow when things knock you out of alignment that I think will be really helpful. It was a game changer for me when I first kind of heard the process of it, and I've added and tweaked it and uh, given it some visual effect to help you guys see how that works. And I'll tell you how to download that a little bit later. So self-care. One of the biggest challenges that I see of clientele coming to me are people not taking care of themselves first. They've gotten so accustomed to taking care of everybody else before themselves that they leave themselves out. They use all their energy to support others. And when it comes time to take care of themselves, they have nothing left to give. So what's really important to know is that you need to recharge that bank of energy by taking care of yourself, by nourishing yourself, learning how to say no, learning how to renegotiate, and learning how to set time for yourself to nourish yourself, to re-energize yourself so that you can be of value to others. And it's not any different than when you hop on the airplane and you you, uh, go through that uh, set of instructions from the stewardess of the uh, flight attendants, I guess, for political correctness. The flight attendants of of the airplane the first thing they tell you is to take care of yourself first, to put on that oxygen mask on yourself before you assist somebody else. It's no different in your in your actual life to help you start achieving the things that you want to achieve in your life, but you, you can only do that if you start taking care of yourself first. I have a colleague of mine who often refers to this, taking care of yourself first, as being properly selfish. This isn't ignoring the needs of others. It's not not helping and supporting other people in times of need or shirking your responsibilities as a a parent or a partner. But it is about teaching yourself what's necessary to take care of yourself first and then taking care of everything else that needs to happen after the fact. So what are the benefits of self-care for you? Well, first of all, other than it 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 re-energizes you so that you can be there and show up for others when that time is necessary, you're also teaching others that it's okay to take care of themselves first. You're teaching your kids that it's okay to prioritize yourself before others because nobody in this world is here to take care of you. You are here to take care of you. And with the remaining energy, you can take care of others. Now, one of the ways that I take care of myself, and I've been doing this pretty much since I quit my government job a little over two years ago, I started working out at my CrossFit gym four days a week. And it's the first thing I do after I send the kids off to daycare and school. I take care of myself. I feed my body through fitness. And I'm not ashamed to say that that's the first thing that I do to start my day. If I didn't do that, I wouldn't have the energy, I wouldn't have the strength, I wouldn't have the stamina, I wouldn't have the stress release if I haven't done that first. It also allows me to be more present with my clients. It also shows my clients that it's normal to take care of yourself first, that it's okay to prioritize yourself before doing the other things in your life. And once it starts to become routine for you in a good way, not a routine mundane way, it just becomes habitual. 
So last January in 2015, I made a new commitment to myself that I was going to work out four times a week at my CrossFit gym. And my goal for the month was to show up 16 times. It wasn't to do a certain amount of weight or to perform a certain exercise a certain way or for a certain number of reps. The, the goal for me was showing up, was showing up and doing something regularly to make it habitual. Because there's something that I've learned through trying to make habits, good habits, form good habits, is to do something repetitively over approximately a 30-day period to make it stick. There was a ton of reasons for me not to do that, whether I felt a little achy the next day or something didn't go my way or I had a project coming up. There were obstacles that were thrown in my path, but I was determined that I was going to achieve this 30-day goal. My gym coach even closed down our gym a couple of times because he was really, really sick, which threw off my entire schedule. So now I had to throw in weekends or nights just to make it work. And I was held accountable by not only my coach, but by myself. I actually wrote on the board that this was the goal that I wanted to achieve. And every time I went in there, I would add another a number to the, to the board. So it was 4 out of 16, then it was 5 out of 16, it was 13 out of 16. I, I kept going. And because I did this for a month, it stuck. I actually showed up four times a week for that entire year. In fact, actually I showed up 18 months I did that exact pattern with a few minor exceptions for vacation and the occasional injury where I took a day off. But for the most part, that entire year, for that 18-month period, I showed up four times a week. I created a good habit of self-care for myself, taking care of myself first, and it's had amazing dividends for me in helping me show up more fully for my family, for my friends, for my clients. And I want that for you. And until you learn that you can have and do and be what you want, you have to prioritize yourself first. So what are some of the things that you can do to help you take care of you? Exercise might not be your thing. I would strongly recommend it, but it might not be your thing. Maybe it's creating a meditation practice where you take a few minutes of your, of your morning before you start your day to just empty your mind and just breathe. It's a tremendous practice to get in the habit of if you have an active mind, if you have an active life. It's a great way to nourish and quiet the mind, quiet the body before you start your day. Maybe it's about taking, blocking off chunks of time in order to read a book on self-improvement or on a topic that you really enjoy to nourish your mind, nourish your heart, nourish your soul. Maybe it's a automatic writing practice to help you empty your mind at the end of the day, to download all the information that you need so that you can have a quality night's sleep. Maybe it's about interjecting fun hobbies into your life so that you have moments of unadulterated joy to sprinkle into your, into your existence. Have fun with it. But try to incorporate something that you can do on a regular basis so that you can start to feel the momentum of getting into a routine that's good for you with good habits. Because there's ways that you can actually avoid doing this stuff that are not helpful for your mind, body, and spirit. Because you can get into routines of avoidance, avoidance behaviors, where you're actually hiding from the world burying yourself in reality TV or basically hiding from your problem. So you need to be really mindful about the activities that you're choosing and are they supportive in feeding you, in nourishing you. I mean, I like, like the next guy, I, I love my survivor, but that's only one hour, right? But if you're finding yourself losing yourself in TV for hours at a time or video games or the Internet, is that really feeding you? Are you truly connecting? Are you nourishing yourself? Or are you just 
tiring yourself and hiding from the things that will actually make you happy. So my number one strategy for, to help you to start incorporating things into your life are to block off time in your calendar. So take out your calendar, your online calendar, pull out your iPhone, whatever it is, wherever you... I mean, I live with my iPhone at the moment, so I'm constantly plugging in times. I'm plugging times in to record these shows, to edit these shows. I'm plugging in time for meditation. I'm plugging in time to to work out. Because if you don't take the time to segment your life into those chunks, it will fill up on you. Other things will pop up, will creep up on you. But if you hold those appointments to yourself as as like a client meeting, you would never skip on a client meeting. You are actually more important than your client. You need to respect yourself enough to hold those that time for yourself to feed yourself. And if you don't respect those times, if you don't respect those appointments for yourself, you will give in and you will end up feel, filling it with something else. And if you can't hold your boundaries, how can you expect anybody else to hold them for you? The next big strategy is consistency. Trying to implement something into your life on a regular basis, doing it daily to support you in making the changes that you want to make in your life. Another strategy that I heard that I really, really love in breaking habits, breaking old habits or starting new habits, came from, I can't remember the guy's name, but I think his company's called Box of Crayons or something like that. And his suggestion is, let's say you wanted to start walking on a regular basis. So every day you want to go for a walk. Sometimes that could be almost like a too big a step. So he suggests that you need to do small incremental things to help you make the change. So instead of you know, forcing yourself to take the walk, the only habit that you actually have to change in this case is to put a pair of sneakers next to your bed. And that the sneakers are the first thing you put on as soon as you get out of the bed. Now you're in your shoes, you're halfway there to the walk, so just take the walk. So changing small little behaviors to help support the bigger behavior that you want to ultimately do. The next strategy is not to expect too much from yourself. Making changes is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world. So don't beat yourself up for it if, let's say, you made the commitment to walk every day and you missed a day. Okay, maybe you overbooked stuff. It's all about becoming aware of what you want and where, what, where you want to go and making the changes. But it's not going to help you to beat yourself up if you miss the day. Give yourself a break and make the adjustments that you need to make in order to do what you want to do. Along with the, the whole concept, the whole idea of not expecting too much, I actually watched a documentary on Netflix last week. It was the uh, Tony Robbins, I'm Not Your Guru. And it, it, there's a section of that film where he makes a comment to somebody, and I really like the concept of this. Maybe not the entire movie, but the concept of this I really liked. He said, most people overestimate what they can do in a year. And they underestimate what they can do in a decade or two. So essentially, we put too much pressure on ourselves to achieve something super massive in a short period of time. But we underestimate how massive a change or an impact we can have over a longer period of time. So take it easy on yourself. Do what you can. See what feels right. See what you like about it, what you don't like about it, and do more of what you like. So I'm emphasizing a ton how much self-care is, how important self-care is to you, how important it is for you to be able to support others in your life, the amazing benefits of, of self-care. And if you strategize properly and prioritize yourself in your calendar, you'll have a much better chance of succeeding in this area. So after the break, I'm going to move from self-care to staying in the flow of life. I have a practice that I want to share with you that's going to help you stay in the flow longer and help you help you be happier on a regular basis and not let those little things knock you off course. See you on the other side. 
You're listening to the Live Your Life Without Limits show with Ian White, Life Fulfillment Coach on WGSN-DB Going Solo Network. Hey everybody, this is your girl, Dr. MV, host of Singles Get Real. Catch the show every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you missed the show, simply check out my podcast. Thanks for listening to WGSN DB Going Solo Network. Welcome back to the Live Your Life Without Limits show with Ian White, Life Fulfillment Coach on WGSN-DB Going Solo Network. So welcome back, everybody. You're listening to Ian White on the Live Your Life Without Limits show. And if you have questions about the self-care section that we covered before the break, please send them to info at coachian.com. I'll be happy to answer questions for you. All right, so before the break, we talked about self-care, its importance, and some basic strategies to help you start implementing self-care into your regular existence. I now want to shift to staying in the flow of life. And when I learned this practice, it was a game changer for me. It has helped me immensely become more aware of how I'm showing up, what's showing up, and then being able to transition and get back in the flow when something happens. And I'm going to add this to my website. So if you go to the uh, Live Your Life Without Limits page on my coachingdeconstructed.com website, actually if you just go to the homepage of coachingdeconstructed.com, there is a link on the front that will take you. I click on the the logo, uh, Live Your Life Without Limits, the little microphone. Click on that, it's going to take you to my page. And there's an opportunity on the next page for you to download this this practice. And when you sign up for my list, you will get access to all of the practices that I share on this show. Feel free to uh, sign up there. All right, so this practice is called the staying in the flow practice or the in the flow practice. And if you don't have it in front of you, that's okay. You can draw it. Grab a piece of paper and a pen. And what I would encourage you to do is to draw a circle. And you keep going around in a circle. And you just go around and around and around and around in a clockwise fashion. Okay? And this is your flow of life. This is you living life. Things are good. Things are okay. Nothing's really going on. Nothing really is really wrong. You're living regular emotions. You're li- living regular events. And life's pretty good. You can actually be grieving and still be in the flow of life. It's just a a normal emotion that you will experience. So you're just in the flow. But at some point in the flow of life, you will encounter things that happen or things that didn't happen that send you spiraling. So if you were to stop at the 9 o'clock on that circle and make a dot, this is the something that happened. And then you can draw like a little tornado spiral downward, down your page. And when something happens and it sets us off course and it sends us into a downward spiral, we can go there for a long time. And we can go into some really dark places. Anger, frustration, uh, anything that's not in the flow, feeling okay, feeling pretty good. And the quicker you catch yourself before you go way down that spiral, the easier it is to get out. But the key here is when you first notice that you are no longer in the flow of life, you can stop yourself by asking yourself some questions. You ask yourself, when was the last time I felt okay? And you basically rewind through your life to find that incident that sent you spiraling. This could be the day before, it could be 10 minutes before, it could be two weeks before. But until you find the source, you will continue to be in your spiral of 
negativity, whatever you want to call it. But once you find that source, you can ask yourself, what really happened? What happened? Who was there? What was said? And what did I make it mean? Because we often attribute meaning to things that are said or not said, done or not done, or actions that have happened to us, around us. Just to give you an, an example from my life, this happened it was probably was it last year, it was two years ago. And I'm getting really good at this. I can get to the point where I'm catching myself within minutes or hours of the event that took place that sent me spiraling. But sometimes, depending on how deep that wound is that was pushed on me uh, or that I let be pushed, uh, can send me spiraling for days. And in this particular incident, it was uh, my mother-in-law. She asked me to do something. I asked some questions. And she flipped out and she said something like, Ian, use your head. And I immediately got pissed off. I was frustrated. I was really PO'd. And uh, it sent me spiraling for probably a couple of days. And at some point I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is not how I live my life. I know that something must have happened. What happened? So I, be, I just stopped myself. I said, okay, when did I feel okay last? And I went through my day, and I went through the previous day, and I hit that one point, and I was like, oh, my goodness. When my mother-in-law said, use your head, I, I completely flipped out. I, I was okay the instant before that comment came out. And then I was not okay. So what she said actually triggered me. I, I, I kind of went through and went through my little process of figuring out what was said and what I made it mean. And what it triggered for me was a belief, an old belief in myself that I'm not good enough, not smart enough. And I know she didn't mean that. But I made it mean that I wasn't good enough. And it sent me to a place that I was, I'm really uncomfortable with. And I went down that rabbit hole. I went down that negative spiral. So it's amazing when you're able to find the trigger point and disassociate it, disassociate it from what was said and what I made it mean. It takes away all the emotion. And I'm able to evaluate and figure out what I want to do with that information. Do I want to have a conversation with my mother-in-law? Or am I, am I okay with it? Then I just realize that it's another piece of the puzzle that I need to work on myself about truly knowing that I am enough. And in doing that, in it disengaging the emotion from, from the story that I had made up over the past couple of days, I got back in the flow. I was basically separating the facts from the story figuring out what was real and what was not, what was made up, what was story, what was fact, and I was able to move on and get back in the flow. Now, this is something I've been practicing for years. I think I learned it initially, the idea of this, in 2006, 2007. So it's taken me quite a while to get to a point where I'm fairly proficient with it, but from time to time, no matter how much you work on yourself and how much you think you've grown personally, somebody will say something and you will make it mean something and it will send you to that place. Frustration, anger, resentment, that instant that you're triggered and you lash out or hide or whatever. The reason I'm sharing this with you is because it gives a visual representation of being in the flow and then getting out of the flow and then how to bring yourself back. And the bringing yourself back is so important to ask yourself the questions. What did I make? The, what happened? What did I make it mean? And what do I want to do about it? And it puts all the power back in your hands to do what you want to do. And there's nothing more self-caring than being able to bring yourself back when you get out of alignment. So when you miss a day, if I go back to the previous segment, if I miss a day of doing my regular walk that I wanted to incorporate and then feeling guilty about missing it, you might go into a negative spiral for a few hours, a few days. 
So going back, identifying the point, identifying what it meant to you, what was said, who was there, what happened, and then identifying how you want to proceed going forward. I guarantee you will get back in the flow faster and faster and faster and faster. And to make it even more fun for yourself, just recognize when it happens and laugh at yourself if if you did it again. Ah, caught myself. I went down the rabbit hole. Make it a game. And try to get as fast as you can at catching yourself, identifying what it really is, and then start moving forward. I guarantee you will move back into the flow. So that'll do it for another episode of the Live Your Life Without Limits show. Take care of yourself. Plug that time into your calendar. And I will see you all next week. Take care. Bye. You've been listening to the Live Your Life Without Limits show with Ian White, Life Fulfillment Coach on WGSN-DB, Going Solo Network.